Robotech is a company that's getting itself into solving lots of problems. We recently posted on our HPC blog about their work with a Swedish mining company to help them figure out how many tunnels they need to dig, how wide they need to be, and how many turnouts, as they call them, that they need in order to get minerals out of the ground with minimal disruption to the local environment, and without spending too much time and money digging those tunnels. Yeah, so I'm a software engineer at Robotech. I'm working mostly on uh, development of our a simulation platform called uh, Rosie. Yeah, we also have uh, agriculture staff and warehouse. Dominic and the rest of the team at Robotech use containers, a lot of them, to run their Rosie platform on AWS, but they hit a snag with container management. In one container, so everything has to be packed uh, into one huge like package. That's because way back when we invented AWS Batch, we built it around the concept of one container per job. That made sense at the time because we're a bunch of HPC nerds and it's not terribly common in, say, CFD to use five different executables in one job. But software is complex and robotic software especially so. The idea of having to shove all the things they needed, often from quite different sources or different dev teams, into just one container all the time, well, that just seemed like unnecessary baggage. It also meant that Rosie was prone to suffering lots of container update churn every time a different team, or sometimes a different company, updated a binary in the nest of dependencies for their jobs. Enter the new multi-containers feature that we launched in Batch earlier this year. This made the Robotech folks very happy. Sorry, couldn't resist. Let's get into it. So you mean like robot tractors on a farm? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's that's one of many like things that you can that you can use it for. Not only tractors, but maybe some, but also some machines that collect that that harvest stuff. Wow! So basically, yeah, that that's what we can simulate, and it, it's always uh, what our customers like uh, wants, and it's always about what cust what our customer wants, and we can adapt our product to simulate the thing that that is required. Yeah. This is Rosie, and this is adapted for the. For, for the mining usage, in particular for uh, checking the productivity in the mine, so how much ore we can we can extract with different with different scenarios. It is very important for us to be able to test software from many different providers. So so you can imagine that that we have some some mining vehicles and they are autonomous, so they are uh, controlled by some software which can be provided by many different, uh, ma ma many different uh, companies. Uh, that's actually why uh, it's, it's very uh, good for us and very uh, good for us that we can, that we can use multi-container jobs. Because like at the beginning, when we are testing just uh, in one container, so everything has to be packed uh, into one huge like package. And with multi-container, we can easily like exchange one part of the system. So what what you will see in, in a moment. So uh, here is the here is the uh, configuration of the experiment. So uh, batch you can run uh, multiple uh, multiple experiments at once. So so I will also use Open 3D engine, which is our simulation engine, also for, also like developed with uh, AWS. Does that literally translate to multiple different containers or multiple different vehicles? Or uh, this is uh, this is this translates to multiple uh, jobs. So, right. so within within these jobs, we will have uh, let's say here like six vehicles in different configurations, starting configuration, and all of these six vehicles will be controlled by the by by the uh, autonomous driving system uh, that is running in the in a single container in like separate container, uh, and that's how uh, we can like uh, easily uh, change some parts of the system. So we, we, it's called systems in the loop. There are like more more of them. You could have like a traffic control or some localization con localization that that we want to do. And if you have like uh, yeah software for those kind of systems from different companies, you you also would like to easily test it within within Rosie. Yeah, and and I will just uh, allow myself to to click start now. So we, mm -hmm. it, it will still take some time uh, to to load. We can see we can see in in uh, batch console that we have three jobs, as I said, three co different configurations. We have three jobs that are starting right now. You can see that uh, all of the three jobs are running. 
so, so you have uh, free, free jobs here that are running. And in our simulation platform, you can see like uh, all of these free experiments, something is happening there. There are like things, there are some metrics that are important for our customer that are being uh, calculated and so on. So you can have here like a overview of the experiment and there yeah, you, you can just follow it. Yeah. So you've essentially got three simulations running in parallel at the moment. Right um, now. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, with, uh, with batch, you can do like 40, 50, 100 of them. It really depends on how many simulations uh, a customer would like to run in parallel. Right. But I, I guess the, the beauty of this is that, you know, if, if you were going to spend, if it was going to take you, say, I don't know, an hour to run one simulation, or you could run them all at the same time in an hour, and it's going to cost you the same either way, really. And, and it's exactly the, the, the reason why we are doing this, because we, we, uh, we have to do it like uh, in real time. It has to be a real time simulation. And uh, one experiment in this case will last, yeah, it's just 20 minutes here, but it's like a, only to show how we use it. But we, we run this for, uh, these experiments for 24 hours. So, you know, waiting for 100 experiments to like 100 days, it's not an option. <laughs> So that's why right. we no, of course, we absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> and and you know, the, in the end, why wait? So so, what's this actually simulating? Is this simulating trucks running around in a mining environment in a yes, underground exactly. mine? Yeah. So so you have some trucks running in the uh, in the mine. It's like a, um, a design of a real mine that that is that is operating that is being built. And uh, what we are doing here, we have like. A, uh, two places where you have this tunnel is of course going up and down and because it's really really expensive for for these tunnels to be to be dug so we have only one lane that you can that you can move on and some trucks have to wait to let this pass through so so you have you have some traffic uh traffic control and then they are going from from loading to to unloading on the other end, uh, on the other end. So yeah, and, and it's calculating the productivity. So how many, how much ore we are able to extract? Uh, but, but so you're you're essentially working like what you're simulating here is you've got a single lane road going through the underground mine, and exactly, as you say, it's expensive to dig these things. So digging those waiting areas or turnaround areas is expensive. You don't want to do too many of those. Yes, exactly. So, so this allows you to actually simulate what's the knock-on effect of just having one fewer turnaround or waiting area. In our traffic configuration that you, that you can see here, you can mm -hmm. actually uh, disable or enable like uh, some turnouts. Yeah. So that's how you can you can simulate different layouts of the mine. So and, and so a turnout is is one of those sort of widening wide areas in the tunnel that yes this like a meeting point that, that you that you pass that vehicles pass each other yeah so if you go to the to the single job you can see that um we have some main container that is like uh operate that is uh, being uh, a main point of the whole uh, of the whole experiment and then we have one controller for each vehicle so we have six vehicles, six controllers, and yeah, as as I said, with multi-container jobs, we can easily mm -hmm. uh, change them if we if we need to. You could have service vehicles in the tunnel as well, and those could be simulated potentially by different, like a different container. Exactly. Yes. So you can also imagine that that uh, using this for, for I don't know the. So what layout of warehouse would you like to have? How many robots there would you like to have? And it's also, it's the same as, as this, as, as this one. So, uh, the thing that we, we want to keep it as modular as possible so we can scale up, so we can adjust to different customers. And yeah, I, I think we are, we are doing quite a good, good job here. Dominic Jago, thanks for coming along today and explaining this to us. This is really cool. Thank you very much. It was not really nice to, to, to be here.
If you enjoyed this tech short, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. If there's a topic you want us to focus on, reach out to us at askhbc at amazon.com. We want to make it easier for scientists and engineers to solve the world's hardest problems. We think the cloud can help by giving them access to powerful tools of any shape and size whenever they need them. And that's where you come in. Let us know what you need. We'll see you next time.